Right, today I'm in Southampton at the 1865. I'm joined by Timmy, lead singer of the New Roses. Hi guys. Welcome and thank you for talking to Two Finger Media. Sure. Um, is this your first time playing Southampton? I guess so, yeah, yeah. We arrived uh, last night, in the middle of the night, and I had the chance to walk around a little on the Christmas market in the city oh, centre. Christmas, yeah, yeah. So it uh, looks beautiful here, and we like the venue. Yeah, the venue is very, very good. Yeah. Lighting's good, sound's good. Yeah, you I guess it's been an old dart, uh, dart hall or something, you know? There, there's a, yeah, there's yeah. a few... Um, it's a crazy venue, I love those kinds of venues where there's history, you know, it's cool. You've also got the balcony as well. So yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah it's just it's a really good Super view. big, man, it's great. But um, you're, I think, a week into your UK headline tour. Pretty much is a week, One yeah, More a For The long. Road is the name of the tour, is it? Or The name of the tour? Yeah. We're still on the One More For The Road tour, so, so to say, same, you know, yeah. yeah. But this is your first proper headline for the UK. UK tour. Yeah, exactly. And how have you found it so far for the first week? It's been a hell of a ride, you know. It, um, uh, it's um, a pretty big country. <laughs> We've seen pretty much all of it so far. And uh, it's kind of a, uh, you know, star-shaped tour. So we go like this all the time. And we've been to Scotland and uh, we've been to uh, all these, uh, yeah, pretty much every corner of the country so far. And we go into London and then we go up to Manchester and stuff like that. So, uh, but we have and a great time and we have uh, such a great band that's traveling with us the brink yeah and, uh, i know those guys we're all on the same bus we're having a great time you know it's it's exactly what it what it should be comradeship pardon comradeship yeah yeah, yeah exactly that's what it is i mean you guys recently played the as uh, it kiss cruise eight yeah. i think it was how was that warmer <laughs> was it the Caribbean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Was, we started in Miami, and then we were uh, uh, we're on the sh on the boat uh, to Nassau, Bahamas, and um, it was pretty warm. So uh, I mean, you've got the coast here, but not quite in the same. No, <laughs> no. So um, it was a blast. Of course, it was our first U.S. show. Uh, it was Kiss. You know, it's not anybody. It's Kiss. And uh, we we shared the stage with the Dead Daisies, with Vintage Trouble, which I admire so much, oh, yeah. and all these other great bands. And um, to to play that kind of crazy uh, festival as a first U.S. Mm. Uh, appearance is a, is a big honor for us. And I'm guessing because you're on a ship as well, everybody's in each other's pocket. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah, so, no. so, so and you have to interact. You don't want to hide. No. You know, it's it's the fans are so honest and. They live for rock and roll music, so every time you meet somebody, you can, you know, you have something to talk about. You have, uh, we we became friends with so many like just random rock and rollers on just that boat. Just the bar, yeah, have a drink. It's, it's, it was a really great experience. Yeah. Share the stories. Yeah, right. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions from some fans. Uh, yeah. So I've been collecting some yeah, information. Yeah, that's cool. I'm excited. And it'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll start off. This one's from Kevin Rose. Mm -hmm. He's put. Kevin I, Rose. Kevin Rose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the Tommy Ruff, or Timmy Ruff, but he's put Tommy Ruff. Yeah, Timmy Ruff CD, Ruff Radio. Oh, wow. The concept is really unique. Yeah. I know most fans only want to hear music, but would the band consider doing a follow-up with all the members involved? You know, the Ruff Radio, for those who don't know, that was um, uh, like a, d a desperate uh, release, you know? We... Um, we we're a cover band at that time, okay? So we just traveled around playing Leonard Skinner, Rolling Stones, Georgia Satellites, Black Crows and all that stuff. And then we, um, uh, we, fa we heard that uh, the opening band for Blackstone Cherry uh, had to cancel their show in, in our hometown. So we were uh, um, about to open that, you know, jump in and open for them. So we played that show and we just played, I don't know, a George Thorogood tune and a Skinner tune and one or two songs that I was kind of working on at the time. We didn't have any original tunes. So after that show, everybody comes and says, hey, you're a great band, uh, where's your CD? So we, did, we don't have any CDs. So me and Urban, um, we said like, we should have a CD. So we um, went to the studio and recorded a couple of demos and then we just uh, came up with that concept so we can put all our demos on the same CD. So we put, uh, took some live tracks, some acoustic tracks, a piano track that I recorded and that studio tracks and put them all together and to make them blend and fit to each other we came up with that kind of radio uh, show um, concept. So it's more of a, a 
almost like a private vision of your music put together you know like your personal like i said it's it was, we were just you know we just wanted to finish a cd very quickly <laughs> so, so we took what, what was yeah. there and said like it's very colorful and it doesn't fit together so we came up with that radio show concept so we can uh blend in uh all this all this stuff you oh, know that's awesome but i love it i love i love that uh, because we have piano on the pedal steel guitar all these instruments that we don't use uh today uh so that is kind of a cool thing to remember so maybe in the future maybe why not maybe a rough radio too or whatever it is you know the new roses radio whatever yeah right dave stewart asks um he says the obvious question i guess is how long before the next album um i can give a pretty specific answer to that so we're gonna be in the studio of us uh from no january on so and then we're gonna release maybe late august 2019 we're gonna release uh our fourth studio record excellent right Brian Cope wants to know um, who, what bands or artists have been the biggest influences on your music? I guess generally. Well, Brian, uh, it's hard to answer that uh, because um, uh, every member of the band has certain uh, influences and very different influences, which kind of uh, brings that New Roses sound together. Um, my biggest influences uh, were like Creedence Clearwater Revival, I would say. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, ACDC, I love Aerosmith, I love the Black Crows, which might be uh, one of my biggest influences. And vocal-wise, I would say Aretha Franklin, um, Marvin Gaye, Solomon Burke, Sam Coke, all the soul singers, so. Great, and Paul great Rogers, um, and, and, and um, a lot more. So, but we all agree on ACDC, Leonard Skinner, the Rolling Stones, and, and the uh, Black Crows. That's brilliant. Yeah. Neil Barrell Neil says, Barrel. do you have any pre-gig routines that you do, personally or as a band? Um, yes, I have to warm up my voice, which I do on my own because I annoy everybody else in the room. <laughs> um, and I do that pretty, you know, intensive you know so i i take maybe thorough work out here yeah yeah so i take 30 until um, to, to 45 minutes to work out my voice warm up my voice and i uh, listen to great music that puts me in the mu uh, in the right mood and um you know we just sit around and have a little chat sure. before the show and um before we go on we always give us a little Pump you know yeah up, a little fist and and um there we go, then, then we are up on stage, you know, it depends on how much time we have, you know. And how much alcohol is flowing. Yeah, how much <laughs> alcohol, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, Ian Long says, do you remember the live interview you did with the UK fan group on Facebook? Oh yeah, I remember that very, very well. It was uh, very, I, I couldn't even, uh, um, uh, you know, dive into every question because there was so I had to read it. And think, by the way, I'm still it. German, so I have to translate the questions. <laughs> uh, think of an answer um, and say it in English. And but while I'm saying it, I have to read the next question. So uh, it was very, very, very uh, um, challenging for me. But I hope you had a good time. Yeah, I believe they they said it was absolutely okay. fantastic. <laughs> Sarah Jones wants to know what's the what what has been the best or and most memorable venue you played in the UK so far? It's hard I guess to say, that's the but next one. <laughs> uh, we just recently played Winter Storm Festival in Troon. Oh, Scotland, yes. Yep. And uh, that was something very special for us because it was, of course, uh, a sold out uh, show, and it was a, it's like an old concert hall. So they have this like mm. ground floor and balcony floor uh and so everything was history, packed yeah. and and it was right at the ocean so when you went out you could we saw i saw the sunset uh over the ocean and then went inside and went to play and um people loved the show mm. you could really feel the the love the energy so um you know i love every show but if you ask me spontaneous, I would say that's, that's a very special show. Well, there's another question that relates to Winterstorm. Yeah. Richie uh, Bryony uh, says, what did you think of Winterstorm? You've obviously just answered yeah. that. Um, but will you be going back to Scotland when you tour again? Definitely. 
definitely. I, th I think they can't uh, wait. I love right. Scotland. Uh, I've uh, privately I spent uh, I already spent Hockmanay in Scotland, uh, in Edinburgh, and that was a very very uh, great experience. And um, we also played a, a little show in Scotland last year, I guess, in in, a, in, in like a smaller kind of venue, I think it called Bannermans or something. Oh, Bannermans in Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We played there and it was special too. And um, They love their music and stuff. I the love the, the I very, love the history. Yeah. You feel so much history and I, I'm really into that Especially stuff. Especially Edinburgh. And yeah, I love so that old. and the castle and all this shit. It's really, really great. Right, Suzanne Everly, um, what's your favorite song to perform and why? <laughs> It's tough, man, because, you know, I have a favorite song for guitar, yeah. which is Dancing on a Razor Blade. I love to play it on guitar. And I have to. I have a favorite song for the band because I feel the vibe of the band, which is One More For The Road. I love uh, Without A Trace because it's a very personal song that I wrote for my best friend. And um, I love to play the ballad acoustic because uh, the people sometimes really connect and so quiet and I love when when a hell out of people can be so quiet together it's a very magical feeling and um, so stuff like that but so I wouldn't pick one there's certain categories I, I really yeah. love you know I mean I think at the end of the day it's a very symbiotic relationship between a band and the audience if you can get that working both ways, yeah yeah it's, it exactly. just gives you such a fantastic that's for the, that's band the and goal the audience. that's the main goal you know well uh, Peter Rattery says, if you could pick one tour to be support act on, who would it be for? <laughs> no pressure. Just one. Just one. I'd love to play with the Rolling Stones, you know. I would love that. And I would love to play with Leonard Skinner because we played uh, with Molly Hatchet and we played with Blackfoot and, you know, with all my southern rock heroes. So Leonard Skinner would be one of those bands that I really, you know, would pick uh, too. But I know Hardy, our bass player, uh, I think he would maybe get a heart attack if he could open for the Stones, you know. Yeah, that, so, that's probably... Yeah, probably I, I would pick them for him. Jezza <laughs> <laughs> uh, Locke, um, he saw you in Bristol, I guess, last night. Was it in Bristol? Um, he, his question is, your first two albums, Dead Man's Voice and Without a Trace, um, great albums but what would you say was the factor or reason that made your third album one for the road such a success and almost brought you guys to the forefront of you know more people um, I think you know that you if, if we would have released one more for the road as a first album uh, we wouldn't have the same success of course so the first record and the second record uh, did their job the to, to make this yeah. uh, third one happen so uh, that's that and I guess uh, you know I grow as a songwriter I hoped that I grow and I hope I see better the, the, the skills of the band and, and I try to write the right songs yeah. to, to uh, polish them out you know to, to make uh, to put us in the best uh, light you know so I hope so. for them will be I hope, I hope we get there, we get, you know, to the, to, we get closer to the core of our, uh, like, um, combined kind of talent, you, you know, band, yeah. so I have a certain talent, and Norman has a certain talent, and Urban has a certain talent, but together we have a different kind of talent, yeah. and to find that, and to polish that out, and make that, uh, put that in the right light is my job as a songwriter. So you'll get the best from everybody out at exactly yeah. the same time. And of course, you know, between the second record and this record has been more than 300 shows. Yeah. You know? So since that man's you voice, a band, we play 300 shows, you grow every time, experience. you learn, you learn, you, you get to know your audience and you, you get to know what they, do, what they request, what they expect from you, you know, we try to, to put that in our music as well, of course. Yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, hopefully that's all your questions answered, all you guys that have asked me to ask Timmy today. Um, all I've got to say is, listen, God, thank, uh, thank you for talking to us at Two Finger Media, had a fantastic show in Southampton tonight. And have Thank a great you. rest of the tour. I hope you stay for the... Oh, I'm, I'm okay. shooting the show as well. Oh, okay. So, That's good. Ah, you're shooting the show. Yeah. Okay. So All thank right. you for talking to us. No, no. Thank you. Thank you.